My name is Ella Fradchley. I'm currently studying Fine Art at Manchester School of Art. My practice is fundamentally a mark-making process rooted in drawing. Repetitive mark-making has been a coping mechanism for me since I was a child. I am constantly compelled to draw and write. It functions as a stalling, a processing, as well as a recording of myself and my internal state. Drawing to me is the most immediate and intuitive way to make. The direct quality of putting down a mark allows for an immediate translation of time. Where painting calls for the reloading of the brush, the mixing of the palette, the constant quality of pen, in addition to repetition, allows for me to enter a state of meditation. The simplest way to describe it is that writing acts as a guided meditation which is not always accessible to me, whereas my drawings utilise the mark as mantra, and this state is always accessible. It is evident that the process is incredibly important to me, but I am also aware that when I'm placing the process in a fine art context, I must also take into consideration the beholder's share. Because of this, my practice is situated on a tightrope between the process and the artwork, a precarious position which is easy to fall off into either side. Much of my practice is spent facilitating myself into feeling comfortable on the tightrope. The process is an integral coping mechanism for me, and when pushing it into fine art boundaries, it can feel like endangering it. I am only making progress when directly in between and taking into equal account, being true to the process and progressing aesthetically. A peace of mind that I feel found that balance perfectly is Mary Magdalene. This circular piece consists of MDF, house paint and my trusty V5 pilot pen. The scale of this piece was made so that the circumference of the circle was just slightly bigger than the full rotation of my arm, meaning that I could sit in one place to complete the drawing without marks gathering at the edges of the piece as they often do in my squared works. The colour of the ground was an attempt to mute the intensity of the work, make it more homely, a step away from the extreme contrast of the black on white of my previous works, allowing the viewer a quieter, calmer experience of viewing that more closely echoes my feeling of making. I'd say this piece is my most successful artwork, as I managed to explore aesthetic choices with the viewer's experience in mind, whilst also staying true to the process. A piece of mine which fell more to the side of process was Restoration 1 and Restoration 2. These pieces are the final results of my experience navigating coping with damaged works. From the initial trauma of the water damaged work, to the mourning period of dejection and discomfort, to the urge to mend, and hours spent cradling these precious pieces of my time through marks, gradually filling the spaces that had washed away with new marks. This was a new experience for me, in which the mark was physically mending rather than acting as an internal coping mechanism. To see this process as a tender restoration turned out to be quite exhausting, but overall healed my relationship with the pieces and created a new understanding for the emotional weight as well as the potential of my practice. One thing this piece really cemented in me is how important healing is to my practice. Often society cares more about pain than healing, but I think healing should be given the platform it deserves. I was complimented a lot on the restoration piece. I found people are drawn more to this work as the pain is evident. The surface has been traumatised and the entire process from trauma to healing is laid out for the viewer. All of my work is born of healing. It's a coping mechanism I developed as a child and yet that explanation of a healing process often isn't enough. People want to see the pain I've been told that I should ruin my work, make them more interesting, like the pieces that were damaged, but I disagree. 
You shouldn't have to bear your trauma to the world for it to be believed. You shouldn't have to relive it to spoon feed your experience to others. The sad reality is that often morbid curiosity outweighs empathy. I think healing should be given the platform it deserves. Healing can stand on its own feet. It's such an important thing to invest in and I think that the art world should be encouraging therapeutic, authentic making. I don't think you necessarily need to find a struggle in your work. The drawing shown here is called Reaching and it's one of my larger pen, paint and board drawings. This drawing has been through several lives and functions as a palimpsest, with layers of past drawings and the past cells that they captured lying on top of each other. This layering and exploration of obscuring these pieces, which feel very much like intimate self-portraits, is something I explore in much of my work. I'm finding myself moving away from the painted ground recently. I'm searching for something which feels softer, more subtle and more closely echoes the feeling of making. The closest I've gotten to that is through my recent MDF series. In my painted pieces, the marks feel as though they become absorbed into the piece, becoming more object than drawing as they're transformed through layers of paint. Whereas in this recent series, I feel that the marks seem to settle on top of the MDF, as if they fell and happened to land in those positions, and from a distance they might look like a layer of dust you could swipe your finger through to reveal the ground underneath. I am constantly learning through making, and I would encourage everyone to pick up a pen and draw some of their stresses away through some meditative making. Thank you for watching.